Let's bring in Fox News contributor Trey Gowdy. Trey, so much to talk to you about. But I know that because you love the law so much, I thought we should give you a chance just to talk about the uh, legacy that Ruth Bader Ginsburg leaves behind. Yeah, you know, I addressed it on a podcast I have coming out tomorrow, Dana. I mean, whether or not you agree with her judicial philosophy or not, I, I've been just struck by the number of women who viewed her as a generational icon, actually someone who transcends generations. I mean, if you if you look at her background, but also in fairness, Sandra Day O'Connor's too, who was the first woman on the Supreme Court. They had difficulty getting a job. They weren't treated fairly. They didn't have equal access uh, to the court, and yet they rose to to the highest level of their profession. She was uh, an unabashed liberal, uh, and yet only three Republicans voted against her confirmation. Dana, three. Um, even though she wound up being the most progressive member of the court, only three Republicans opposed her when she was moved from the D.C. Court of Appeals mm -hmm. to the U.S. Supreme Court. A lot of that bipartisanship went out the window after 1987 and the um, Justice, or the Judge Bork nomination. That uh, you know, everybody younger than us could Google it and, and see what happened. But you'll learn a lot more about that. And so now we get to this question of what's going to happen and what are the politics of it. Take a listen to Joe Biden and what he recommended to Republican senators. I appeal to those few Senate Republicans, the f handful who really will decide what happens. Please, follow your conscience. Don't vote to confirm anyone nominated under the circumstances President Trump and Senator McConnell have created. Don't go there. Uphold your constitutional duty, your conscience, let the people speak. What's your take on that? <laughs> That's a head-scratching analysis. Uh, instead of listening to Joe Biden for legal advice, I'm actually going to go back to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. In 2016, she said there's no constitutional impediment at all to the Senate taking up a Supreme Court nomination in an election year. I mean, the president has a responsibility to be the president through his or her last day. I mean, there's not some decreasing sliding scale of authorities based on how close you are to, to the end of a term. You can wage war on your last day. You can grant clemency. The, the Obama administration, you know, assured us, they proved to us you can actually investigate folks up until the very end. So the president is, has the power to nominate someone. She said so in 2016. Keep in mind, when it relates to Joe Biden, I mean, John Roberts, I think you'll agree with me, John Roberts is now seen as the most moderate member of the conservative wing. Of those conservative justices on the Supreme Court, he's the most moderate. Yet Joe Biden, Barack Obama, John Kerry, Hillary Clinton, Harry Reid, Chuck Schumer, and Dianne Feinstein all voted against him. Now, I remember it well moderate... because I was the spokesperson yes. <laughs> for uh, Judge Roberts um, in that nomination, and then... Uh, Justice Alito as well. What would you say to Republicans who are being accused of hypocrisy? Um, we're going to talk to Howie Kurtz here in a little bit about um, the media pointing out that you said one thing in 2016. You know, part of me feels like uh, the Republicans are saying we're, we're not going to be beholden to that. Or also, if you look at exactly what they said, they're saying that they are consistent. Does it matter? I, I think in a perfect world, in the world I hope you and I live in one day, Dana, it does matter. I mean, one of the precepts of conservatism is consistency. I do understand the distinction, I guess, between having both the Senate and having the White House, and I think that's what they're using as kind of that line of distinction now, is that President Obama was in a different party from who held control over the Senate. I, I think the better argument is to say everything has changed. What you did to Kavanaugh, the fact that you can't even bring yourself to vote for John Roberts. I mean, every one of those names I mentioned, the last four Democrat presidential nominees voted mm -hmm. against the most moderate member of the so-called conservative bloc. But not so, only that, Trey, Supreme but Court if you go back to when you were in Congress and Harry Reid decided to nuke the filibuster for those three uh, circuit nominees, that was really, if you'll recall, Mitch McConnell at the time said, I'm warning you, don't do it, but they did it anyway, and now there are consequences for it. I'll give you the last word. No, you're exactly right. There are consequences for the decisions we made in life. So Harry Reid changed the rules. The Republicans went ahead and changed them all the way. 
if, if, if you don't like what the Senate does, um, you can vote them out in November. But right now they have the power and the president has the responsibility to fill the vacancy. All right, Trey Gowdy, always love having you. Thank you.